Welcome back to another episode of DJB Outdoors. This is the first hunt that we're going to show you from 2023. And it's mule deer hunting. Hopefully, big buck mule deer hunting. Um, so every year for the last eight years, I have been traveling down south, uh, most of the time on my own. A couple times Jordan has been with me, uh, but he's now, he, he, he kind of, he ventures out on his own or, or with a buddy of his. So most of the time I'm on my own. And I'll be honest, I want to start off this episode by, and if you guys watched last year's episode, uh, you guys can, you guys can, you probably, uh, probably know this already, but mule deer hunting has not been, it's not been my thing. At least it hasn't been my thing as far as uh, being able to harvest mule deer. I've had numerous chances at getting close. I've had numerous shot opportunities. And for a wide variety of reasons, I just cannot close the deal. Um, that right there, that's my mule deer from, from last year. That's the first mule deer that I've ever been able to, uh, to harvest. So last year was pretty exciting. It was finally nice to, to get one on the ground. Uh, and I was really, really looking forward to getting back down there this year uh, to hunt big mule deer in velvet, first week of September. The countryside down there is awesome. Um, I just, I, I love, other than the snakes, don't like the snakes. Uh, but everything else down there, the landscape, the uh, all the you know, the variety of animals that you see down there. I just, it's beautiful, beautiful country. I love going down there. Uh, so let's get into it. First attempted stock underway. Randy and I found a big, big buck this morning. We watched him for a long time. Um, he's not in a good spot. So this is not going to be one of those stocks where you move in, you know, 45 minutes an hour and come up over top of him or something. This is going to be what I think is going to be a long, drawn out. You're going to have to be very patient. Stock. I don't have don't have any video of them yet. It is so smoky down here that it really makes just finding these deer difficult. Never mind trying to video them from a mile away. So no video. Hopefully we get some video of him here this afternoon sometime and more more importantly hopefully you get him on video with an arrow flying into his ribs we'll see how it plays out here So these, these bucks uh, that I've been watching, they, they actually got up and they went around the corner and they actually went down into the very bottom of that, of that big valley. And, and I had to watch them from a distant, uh, from a distance back, like I had to stay back from them quite a ways. Uh, and eventually, while I, I did get to watch them for a long period of time, they ended up making their way north. Uh, and completely out of sight. Didn't know kind of where they went. Uh, 
didn't look like they were really spooked. I, I'm not sure. I'm still still not sure why they ever got up and and went out of there. But but I had to I had to keep making my way slowly down that valley along the top and uh, and was eventually able to to find them then, I, again. I think the only thing I can do is just try and belly crawl towards him. This is a really, really long shot because I have no cover really between me and him except for the grass. So it's going to be really difficult to get on video. Um, I'll probably take the camera in there a little ways and then just set it up and then just try and crawl in on him. 
Fingers crossed. good stock in there got to 26 yards shot felt perfect when I let it go but it was far from perfect well I am disappointed to report that I have not found the buck and I'm not really surprised. I've watched the video, and, and although I can't zoom in on it really close and see where the hit was, the arrow is covered in a lot of fat. Well, not even a lot of fat. The little bit of evidence that it even hit the deer, uh, there's a little bit of fat on the broadhead and a little bit on the shaft. No blood, there was no blood, no hair where I shot him. Um, followed his tracks across the road across the fence here no blood not not a single drop of blood um, I went 
to the river, which is about a quarter mile away. Checked, looked down into a bunch of coolies, saw two deer, one little buck and a doe. No, uh, no sign of him anywhere. So, um, like I said, I watched a video and, and on on impact or on the, on the shot, I'm not sure. He definitely takes a nosedive. Like he he went down really low. So I don't know if you know on the on the shot, the sound of the shot, he dropped. Um, and I, because I think I hit him high. Like I think I hit him really high uh, up in kind of the mad uh, fatty part of the back. So yeah, pretty disappointed. That was an awesome buck, awesome stock. You know you don't. That was a gift, really. It was a gift, and just blew it. So, keep trying, I guess. Now, <clears throat> I am going back to the same coulee that I was in last night at the end of the day. I know that there's a pretty good buck in there. So I know what you're probably thinking. Why in the heck weren't you taking a shot at those deer as they came up in the field? Um, well, basically two reasons. Uh, one main reason, and that's the video camera. So as as I'm hunting solo and I'm trying to get, get everything on video, it's extremely hard to video 
and then get the camera set up so that I can actually focus on taking a shot. And, and those deer came out of that draw so fast that I just, <clears throat> I didn't have time. The big buck, well, all, 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 uh, all four or five of the bucks that came out of there that evening yeah, came by me at 35 yards. It would have been, uh, you know, a, a, a real good shot attempt. They just weren't, they just wouldn't stop moving and, and they came out so fast. I didn't even have my bow ready. I had an arrow knock, but I didn't have it sitting on my lap or anything. So, uh, I just wasn't, I wasn't ready. And, and, and so that's, you know, that's, that's really the reason why. Um, hunted the next day, of course, uh, was pretty uneventful. Saw some deer, uh, got us some, some pretty good country again, but, but no shooters, no stock attempts. On day number four, I ended up stalking in on a deer that was in this really steep, brushy draw, um, and got right, got really close, got within 25, 30 yards. And take a look at the video. Uh, I'm not sure if the wind swirled, but he ended up walking. Didn't really come flying out of there, but but definitely, I think smelt me and came walking out of there uh, out the bottom take a look at the video So as you can see, uh, that deer with almost 100% certainty was the deer that I put an arrow through on day number two. That's a mile and a half away from where I got the shot at him on, on day number two. Um, but looking at his back, looking at the wound that he had on his back, I am almost 100% sure that that, that that was the same deer. So, unfortunate, couldn't get another shot at him. I uh, would have loved to, uh, to be able to kind of close the chapter on that deer. Um, I hunted for uh, another couple days, uh, right to the end of the week. I uh, saw a few more deer, didn't really have any more real close encounters. My next real good opportunity came actually close to home. Uh, so when I was, when I was done uh, that first week of hunting down south, I, I traveled back home. It was a few weeks later, uh, actually on my way home from work one day, I spotted a buck out in the field. I uh, didn't have the video camera with me then. Um, just a nice narrow uh, field, uh, barley growing in it. And I went back in there two days later in an e for an evening hunt and set up where I thought maybe he might come out again.
I smoked them that time. I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm back at home, and you remember how I said I don't think I got the shot on film? Um, it's not great, but it's on film, and I'll tell you what. Because of a 65-inch screen, I've been able to look at the footage, and from what I see, that should be a dead deer. Um, I think I, he was quartering away and I put it right in the middle and it should have went through. And I think as when the arrow kicked out the other side, I think it hit that off shoulder and went out the other side. So I feel a lot better now that I've watched that on the, on the 65 inch TV. Um, so we're still going to give him overnight and uh, go in there first thing in the morning. Still, even though I feel better now, it's still not. Uh, the greatest feeling that you still always have that little bit of doubt when you leave him overnight like that. But um, hopefully we go there in the morning and he's there. So see you guys in the morning. So I went back out and looked the next day, all day for that deer. Uh, in the video, right after the shot, I, I had mentioned I heard him hit a fence. Uh, that's where I started. I found exactly where he hit that fence and, and that at that impact point, uh, there was some blood on the ground, there was some hair, and when I found that, I thought, I'm going to find this deer, and after that, there was hardly any blood. There was enough blood, um, spots, very, very spotty here and there that I was able to follow for about two, three hundred yards, uh, but eventually that ran out, it trickled out, uh, out to nothing. I went in there, so I hunted, or I, I looked all that next day, right till about six o'clock in the evening. I went back the following day uh, with Crystal and, 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 a, and a neighbor of mine. We looked for three solid days after and didn't find really any anything else. We were able, on the second day, we were able to find a little bit more of a blood trail. Uh, basically on my hands and knees, I was able to, to track him. What he did is he ended up coming right back to where he was. Uh, 
I'm going to assume within a couple hours of, of being shot. Um, again, hardly any blood. I don't know if that deer survived, if he died. Um, even to this day, it, it kind of makes me sick thinking about it because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I've watched that video in slow motion, zoomed in a hundred times, maybe more. And there's part of me that still believes that that was a perfect, perfect shot. And then there's part of me that thinks it maybe was a bit too far forward and it missed or just clipped one lung and actually came out the front side of him as it, cause he was, he was angled away uh, pretty good. But in the end, did not find the deer. Um, so that's two deer now I wounded uh, during the, the mule deer season. And to say that I feel bad is, is just an understatement. Um, the first one, definitely think that, that he's okay. The second one, I'm just, I'm just not sure. So fast forward now, we get into October uh, and I decide I'm gonna make a quick four day trip back down south to see my buddy Randy and hopefully we're able to, uh, to connect on something else down there. We're off to a, we're off to a pretty good start here. Um, I've only been out spotting for about 45 minutes and we found a buck bigger than anything I saw on my first trip down here earlier this year. So we're going to keep watching him, see if he beds in a spot where we can maybe make a stock. But pretty exciting because he's a, he's a good deer. Um, still watching this buck. He's bedded down in the real high weeds. Um, kind of along that, this big slough slash lake. He was in there with another buck, but that buck, I'm pretty sure, took off out of there. I actually, I actually moved down the road in the truck, and when I got back here and parked, there was a buck running up the hill from where he was. But the big buck stayed down in there, and I've seen him, I've watched him get up a couple times. And what I'm doing right now is... Uh, it's supposed to get windy today, and I we need need the wind in order to get into where he's at, because that stuff is going to be loud. Um, it's out of the south right now, which is okay, but <clears throat> west, which is which is supposed to be here in another hour or so, is going to be ideal. So I'm just waiting for that wind to shift and pick up, and then I'm going to go in and make my move. So after watching that buck from the road. Um, for quite a while, watched him till about, well, it was noon before the wind really picked up. Uh, and then what, what he, what happened was I, I stalked in, the wind actually got blowing real, real good. Uh, so I stalked in right along the bottom there and got to within about 80 yards of where he was bedded and then had him get up and actually feed away from me while I was in that, that tall uh, bulrushes or slough grass, whatever you want to call it. Eventually, he, he ended up feeding for quite a while on his feet. And what he did was, as he fed away, at, at one point he decided, that's it, you know, I don't want to be down here in the bulrushes and made his way up past me at about 80 yards and bedded up on a hill directly south of me and I could not move from where I was. He had me pinned down. Uh, he didn't know I was there, but from where he was bedded, I couldn't move. And, and if I would have, I would have blew him right out of there. So I, I decided to stay there for the rest of the day. Uh, I sat in that slough bottom in some real damp mud and grass until it got dark before I snuck out of there. Uh, and then decided to start the process all over again the next day. Well, good morning. It's day number two of hunt number two from mule deer this year. I'm back out looking for that big buck that I was after yesterday, and 
already spotted them. So we can check that off as the first little bit of good news. Now it's just a matter of watching him. He's bedded down right now, but he's right out in the open. I don't think he's going to stay there. So now it's just a matter of watching and seeing where he goes to bed. Just walking here to get a better vantage point where you can see where this buck bedded down, but he, he's in a little drainage. I could see him from the highway, but couldn't see exactly where he bedded down. So we'll see here. All right. Just back in the truck here, getting ready to go in and make a stock. He's in a he's in a pretty good spot. I wouldn't say it's a great spot, but it's it's not a bad not a bad spot. Definitely a spot I should be able to get within 50, 60 yards comfortably, and then past that I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. So I'm really hoping that this is the last stock I do in 2023. We'll see. So, all the chips are on the table. I head in for what I'm hoping is the last stock that I'm gonna do this season. Now, keep in mind um, that trying to capture everything on video while stalking in when you have to crawl and uh, slide and basically sneak in at a, at a real slow pace and you're packing your bow, uh, it's just impossible to try and get everything on video. So much like the stock I had back in September on day two there, I set the camera up uh, about, would have been about 80, 90 yards back from where the buck was bedded and I start to sneak in. And I crawl in there and I get to uh, about 40 yards and I kind of hang up there trying to figure out you know exactly where he's at and, and I'll you know I know that the video is not great um, I do have a GoPro on my uh, on my bow uh, but as you're gonna find out that was useless at the uh, point I needed it to be useful um, so I get to the first spot and I, you know, the buck actually gets up. You can't see it on video, but the buck gets up. I know I'm not in a great position, so I end up sneaking around to the left a little bit and then coming in at him again, get a little bit closer. I get to about 35 yards. Um, he ends up bedding, or I uh, start standing up uh, again. And I know at this point I'm still not in a spot where I can get a shot away. I end up crawling into 24 yards, and that's where I ended up staying for the rest of the day and I sat there and I sat there and I sat there for about six and a half hours six hours in the camera still rolling I got a lot of, a lot of battery life I got lots of video on the uh, space on the card and then this happens So the main camera's down, the wind is blowing it over, um, it is 
There's about an hour left in the day. I've been sitting out there for six and a half hours. The buck gets up in front of me. And as he gets up in front of me, he walks to the left and stops and looks directly at me. At this point, I'm in a sitting position. I have my bow on my lap. I go to turn the GoPro on. And as I'm trying to turn my GoPro on, I realize that the button, the record button, is not at the top where it should be. I look down and the GoPro is in the, I had put it in the, in the, uh, in the little holder sideways. So I don't have time to fiddle around with that. And long story short, he looks at me, he looks at me, he looks at me until he figures that I'm not a threat. Uh, he walks by me at 18 yards. I get a shot finally at 32 yards and the rest is history. Well, the wind's blowing pretty bad. I hope you guys can hear me. It's, uh, when it comes to videoing mule deer, it's just one top right after the I've been sitting all day, seven hours in one spot, waiting for this buck to, to get up. I had the big camera set up behind me, recording the whole thing, and some, sometime throughout the day, the camera just showed I 
hit them and just thought it made a perfect shot and couldn't find them and and doesn't seem like he was bleeding really bad um it just it just those kinds of things when it comes to mule deer hunting it's just that's the norm for me and it's unfortunate especially when i wound something but to be able to come down and get a shot at this guy and absolutely make it count 32 yards hit him hit him perfect just maybe a, just a touch back but he didn't go 100 yards just a gorgeous gorgeous mule deer i'm i'm just i can't tell you how happy.